Welcome to the Knox video training series. In this video, we'll provide an in-depth walkthrough of Knox Asset Intelligence. Let's get started. Knox Asset Intelligence provides enterprise IT departments with configurable dashboards and data widgets in order to help predict and prevent frontline issues related to device performance. Traditionally, IT admins didn't have the tools to gain visibility into their device fleet's overall battery health or easily identify which apps were consuming the most power or causing the most issues without requiring direct user interaction. With Knox Asset Intelligence, IT admins can remotely monitor the performance of every device in their fleet and proactively target, locate, and troubleshoot devices using a simple, easy-to-use console. Before you begin, you will need an account at samsungnox.com, access to the Knox Asset Intelligence console and a valid license, and one or more devices in your account. If you purchased your devices through a Samsung-approved reseller, make sure you've given them your customer ID so they can upload the devices to your account directly. When you first launch Knox Asset Intelligence, you'll land on the main dashboard page. Here you'll find key performance metrics for your fleet grouped into one or more data widgets. IT admins can define which widgets get shown by default on the main dashboard page. If you just want to see metrics related to network, apps, or battery performance, focused dashboards can be found in the left navigation menu. The settings option lets you select and configure the data widgets that appear in your dashboards. Let's click settings to take a look at some of these customization options. The Data Conditions tab is where you can specify when and how often performance data is collected from your devices. Defining a work shift configuration lets you limit data collection to either a certain time and day of the week or to when your devices are in Wi-Fi coverage or using certain apps. For more granular control, the Data Upload section lets you define how often data gets collected for certain features. Moving to the Customize tab, here is where you'll select which data widgets appear in your main dashboard. Simply use the checkbox to select the widgets you want to display. In the Thresholds tab, you can define when and how often email alerts get sent whenever an event occurs. Depending on your business needs, you can receive email alerts when a percentage of devices encounters an issue, like when 20% of your devices have apps that don't respond, or when a certain number of issues occur, for example, when 10 or more Wi-Fi disconnects happen across your entire fleet. Administrators can also use email preferences to specify who receives the email alerts and which types of alerts to ignore altogether. The SSID Allow List tab lets you specify whether events should be collected for all devices or only a select few up to a maximum of 10. And finally, in the Managed Apps tab, you can define which apps you want to filter out when viewing data insights. Once you're done with your settings, click Save to return to the main dashboard page. Back on the main page, you can create device groups to use as filters for whenever you want to view data insights. For example, rather than view events for every single device in your fleet, you might want to only see events for your kiosk devices. We can create a group by clicking Group Devices next to Settings, then uploading a CSV file listing all of the devices within this group. Once our file is uploaded, we can use the Group Filter to only display events related to the corresponding devices. To display event data over a specific date period, use the date filter to select a period of up to 60 days. From the main dashboard, you can also drag and drop each widget to change the order in which they appear. Now that we've learned how to customize our main dashboard, let's explore a couple of widgets in more detail. The Device Statuses widget lets you know if and how many of your devices are active and enrolled with the Knox Asset Intelligence service. To view a summary of issues across your entire fleet, the Today's Issues widget displays every problematic event that occurred during the day. You can click a specific issue to view additional details like the number of affected devices and the number of events per device group. As previously mentioned, Knox Asset Intelligence provides focused dashboards for network, apps, and battery performance data respectively. Let's now take a closer look at each of these dashboards. 
When you first select Network Dashboard, you'll see your Wi-Fi disconnection events displayed across two widgets. One widget displays the top five BSS IDs or MAC addresses with the most disconnections, while the other displays the top five device groups with the most disconnections. At the bottom of each widget, you can check which BSS IDs, devices, or groups exceeded the disconnect threshold set by the administrator. Clicking the arrow button on each widget leads you to a full list of all disconnect events over the selected period. In our example, we see the full list of every BSS ID that had Wi-Fi disconnect events over the last 14 days. From this view, we can easily see the total number of disconnects and their impacted devices and groups. You can click view all to jump to a list of impacted devices or groups, or click an event count in the list to view a chart detailing the types of Wi-Fi disconnects that occurred in order to help troubleshoot further. Let's move over to the apps dashboard. Here you have several widgets to help track your fleet's work profile app usage and performance. The total app usage, foreground app usage, and background app usage widgets show the combined running times in hours of the five most commonly used apps on your devices. At the bottom of each of these widgets, the most commonly used app is highlighted along with its average runtime across all devices. The apps with highest battery consumption and apps with highest network usage widgets lets you see which apps consume the most battery and network resources and how many apps exceed the network data and battery consumption thresholds set by the administrator. The app type widget lets you see the total number of managed and unmanaged apps running on your devices and what percentage of the total app usage comes from your managed apps. And finally, the two widgets titled apps with most issue events and groups with app issue events lets you know which applications cause the most issues related to not being responsive, being forced closed, or having abnormal events. Let's take a closer look at total app usage by clicking the arrow button on the widget. Here you can see an expanded view of the top five apps used across your fleet. A comprehensive bar chart provides a breakdown of your app usage metrics with each stacked bar representing the total runtime of the apps used during the selected period. If you want to look into more detailed usage data for a certain app, click the app name in the list below. On this page, you can see the total runtime, average network data usage, average runtime, and average battery consumption when using this app. In device count per app versions, a pie chart lets you quickly see how many versions of this app are being run across your entire fleet. And finally, in the app versions table below, you can find additional details about the number of devices running each version of the app, as well as a total and average runtime and network usage metric across each version. Switching back to our apps dashboard, let's now focus on two widgets that help monitor app issues specifically. Apps with most issue events helps you identify which apps are at the highest risk of disrupting your business operations. This widget monitors the top five apps that don't respond, that have a forced closed event, or experience any type of abnormal behavior. If your devices are associated with groups, the Groups with App Issue Events widget displays the top five device groups with the highest number of reported app issues, along with the number of impacted apps and devices associated with each group. Let's click the arrow icon to view more details about the apps with the most issues. The ANR, or Apps Not Responding Events column, displays the number of times an app was not responsive. And the Force Closed Events column lets you know how many times an app unexpectedly shut down. For the Abnormal Events column, Samsung devices will log an event here if any of the following occur. The device frequently wakes up, there is high background battery usage, there is excessive background battery usage, the background CPU usage is too high, or if there is excessive background camera usage. You can drill down even further by selecting an app name or event count. Let's click an app name to explore the details within. Here you can see which versions of your app trigger the most issues, and which versions affect the most devices. In the table below, you can click any link to see which devices or device groups 
are running this version of the app. If you click any link in the Forced Close Events column, you'll also have the ability to view the event's call stack data, which can help you identify what the app was doing before it stopped working. If you want to perform an even deeper investigation of your app issues, you can request a device debug log. To do this, go to the Devices page and select the device, then go to Actions and select Request Device Debug Log, then click Confirm. The end user will receive a notification requesting them to send the debug log from their device. Once the log is sent, you can download it by going to Device Debug Log in the left navigation menu. Shifting focus to the battery dashboard, this is where you'll find a number of widgets providing important insights into your fleet's overall battery health. Like with other widgets, you can click the arrow icon on each of these widgets for a more detailed drill down, and you can see which devices or groups have exceeded any thresholds set by the administrator. Let's explore a couple of these battery-related widgets in a bit more detail. The Battery Status widget allows you to identify how many devices are in a low battery, charging, consuming, and fully charged state. The Battery State of Health widget groups all of your devices into three categories, good, normal, and bad. These states represent the overall health of each device's battery and how much of its original charge each battery can hold. Good status means that the battery is able to hold 75% of its original charge or higher. Normal is between 55 to 75% and bad is 55% or lower. When you click a health state, you'll drill down further to see which devices or groups are affected. Let's look at all of the devices that have a bad battery state of health. Here you can see which devices are affected and the average time it takes to reach a fully charged state. In addition to being able to identify which devices and groups have performance issues, Knox Asset Intelligence can also provide IT admins with robust asset tracking capabilities to help locate where these devices are. Once devices are located, IT admins can send a custom message to the user or issue a command to make devices play a sound, vibrate, flash a light, or go into battery saving mode. This concludes our in-depth walkthrough of Knox Asset Intelligence. For more information on anything related to Knox Asset Intelligence, please visit docs.samsungnox.com. Thanks for watching.